don't laugh because you're paying for them to be at university. Okay, you work really hard for those tax dollars so these guys can uh, come up. They did rhyme to a certain extent. And let's put this in perspective here. Lenin and the Bolsheviks storming the Winter Palace, 1917. This ain't. The men's rights movement is fairly active. Look, I'm not even convinced of all their positions, but they have a right to speak. Frequently, though, their lectures and meetings are attacked and their speakers are drowned out. Thus, Robin Urbach is from the National Post, and uh, she wrote about this. There weren't many protesters there. No, there weren't. At least from the video, it didn't seem like there were a whole lot of people. There was a blog post that came out afterwards from the protesters, and by their account, there were three different groups that actually came to this lecture to interrupt it. Um, by their account, they came in, they cheered, they banged their hands, they sang, they did all sorts of things, and they were successful in the end. According to their account, um, what actually ended up happening is the group simply relocated somewhere else and continued on with their event. Who was the speaker, or were there several of them? There was one speaker in particular, and he was basically talking about some of the issues that men face when it comes to family court. So he mm. was sort of talking about, um, you know, parents and when custody battles sort of come up, how it affects fathers as compared to mothers. So mm. generally, we're not really talking about contentious issues here. We're just talking about family court and how it disproportionately sort of affects men in negative mm. ways. Which is pretty much a self-evident truth now. Very few people would right. deny that. Um, a lot of grandparents uh, who get involved in this too. I mean, the, the courts make money out of this and they don't do a very good job of it. So they even protested that. Some of the other people who've spoken at these men's rights groups have been a little bit more controversial. They've spoken right. about the fundamental nature of gender and society. We, there was a speaker, actually, who was interrupted by the same group of protesters. Yeah. They call themselves the Revolutionary Student Movement, and they... Oh, they uh, That's very sad. Yeah, well, they <laughs> use a lot of uh, old socialist terms. If you read through some of their documents, there's a few comrades sprinkled in there, a few yeah. uprisings and those sorts of things. Uprising, but yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. This group was actually behind another disruption of a professor. Her name was Janice Fiamengo. Oh, she was on the show, yeah. Right, and uh, she was interrupted back at the University of Ottawa in April. So, and she arguably she was talking about issues that were a little bit more testy. She was mm. talking about rape culture and those sorts of things. And um, you know, the, obviously the lines are a bit more divided when it comes to those sorts of things. But this group seems to sort of continue and go around the circuit, mm. finding these speakers and trying to interrupt what they have to mm. say. If it's something which is directly violent and repugnant, if it's denying an absolute historical fact, the Holocaust or slavery or something, but Controversial is good for university. I mean, I, I know this is very obvious stuff, but surely students should be not only tolerating, but welcoming contrary opinion. And if they don't like it, don't go to the bloody thing. Well, you would think so, but that's almost sort of like an old romantic notion of what a university is supposed to be. It is quite sad. But, I mean, this is something that comes up over and over again. And I would sort of say the issue a couple of years ago might have been pro-life demonstrators. So mm. we heard a lot about it. It constantly came up about signs and protests and lectures and these sorts of things. And students, often on the left, would come out and say, you know, this infringes on our right to a safe space. And that's another <laughs> term that sort of... Yeah. thrown around a lot. So although I'm sure a lot of pro-life groups aren't exactly welcome on campuses these days, it, the spectrum seems to have mm. sort of shifted in a way. These men's yeah. issues groups seem to be the new hot topic that mm. needs to be shut down. I think that's true. And you know as well as I do that the, the people who protest, they're not the mainstream of university. I mean, having put what, three kids to university, most students, they have no idea what's going on. They, they, right. They're either studying or more likely having fun. It's a tiny number. There's one person, and I've seen her myself at three different protests, and she, she, she is um, ubiquitous and, and great fun. Can we see, see a clip of our old friend now, please? Feminists do not want you to lose custody of your children. The assumption that women are naturally better caregivers is part of patriarchy. Feminists do not like commercials in which bubbly dads mess up the laundry and competent wives have to bustle in and fix it. The assumption that women we're working on it and you guys are trying to dismantle it but if it we can't play too much because just be 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 but her hair is wonderful isn't it and she's Look, I don't know really who she is, but she's everywhere and she's crazy and she identifies herself, it seems, by being in a protest and screaming at people. Mm -hmm. Well, you do tend to see a lot of the same cast of characters mm -hmm. come up from place to place to place. And it's amazing that they actually find the time to do this along with the university 
education. I mean, yeah. it wasn't so long ago that I was actually in there, and I wouldn't dream of going around to all these places just by virtue of the fact that I wouldn't have the time to do it. Well, Especially, well, you're a good student. <laughs> the, the, what is darker, though, is the hypocrisy, because the, there are some deeply sinister regimes and, and ideologies out there, mm -hmm. and the speakers are seldom protested. Uh, uh, the, in fact, the bulk of the Islamic world treats women, gay people, minorities with uh, disdain, if not violence, but their people will speak and there's hardly a word said. Right. Well, that's obvious. The, the, the hypocrisy, as you mentioned, is quite... is very obvious and it's there i think there's this sort of notion of the monopoly on morality and mm. there's this singular sort of ideology that's the accepted notion on these campuses and usually it's the left-wing ideology that mm. this is the way that we're going to per perceive things and everything that doesn't sort of fall into this uh, dogma is going to be protested. Then on the other hand, we have these other speakers where you don't hear a word coming from these specific groups. I mm. think that hypocrisy is definitely there and it's something that's continuously called out over and over again, yet nothing seems to happen. I wonder if it's just the message isn't getting across or no one really mm. seems to care. <laughs> Finally, I mean, I I've done a lot of speaking quite often at universities. Generally, it's fine. But every now and again, there's been a protest. And I've always said, um, you can ask me the most challenging, even abusive questions, but if you try to interrupt me, I usually have a camera there. Right. Uh, you'll be filmed and it'll be on primetime TV tomorrow and a copy will be sent to the Chancellor and, and so on. And it's amazing how quiet they are. But Campus security, it's one thing to, to be uh, loud, but to try and disrupt someone giving a lecture that's been officially booked, is there no obligation for people to arrest and take away those demonstrators? Well, there should be something done. In this case, fortunately, at U of T, campus security was called in. They did sort of read, I think they actually went there and they read the def definition of free speech to the <laughs> protesters there, which would have been fabulous to see on camera. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I don't know what happened in the end. In the end, the event organizers actually decided to switch locations. And it's almost too bad. You would mm. think that the protesters, if they're the ones causing the disruption, campus secu security should have said, all right, move along. If you're yeah. going to disrupt these people's free speech, then you're the ones who have to move. In any case, I mean, it was effective because the event continued on, but there are too many times where we don't see campus security intervene or intervene in an effective way. Yeah, I, even to the contrary. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you.